back at the table for another week of the hottest comics defining this generation of collectors with Butch. You know I got cat hair on my black shirt, and we got Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles. How you feeling, brother? Feeling great. Glad to be back. Took last week off. I want to thank Jeff for holding down my spot for me. Every single week, we report on the comic books that are breaking records, so hit that subscribe button because there is something to be learned with every single one, but especially this video, and we're going to prove it here with three of the comics that made our hot 10, but not before we tell you about number 10 on the list with Amazing Spider-Man issue number 14, the first appearance of the Green Goblin. It's also the first battle between Spider-Man and the Hulk, and we're still seeing gains on this book post No Way Home. There's so much potential for the Spider-Man universe, so Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, is still something that can be utilized in the MCU. Which brings us to the record-breaking sales. We're starting with a .5, which sold for $1,000 back in February. That's up 15%, now selling for $1,149. We saw a 5.5 come to market this last week, and although it was the second highest recorded sale, didn't quite break the $5,000 height, it was only down 6%, if anything, showing consistency, selling for 47 hundo. Well, this 8.5 sale may bode well for that 5.5 with a trickle-down effect and all. It last sold for $8,950 back in April. It's up 7% with this new high of $9,544. Only the Mary Marvel Mad Med can come up with a character like this, the grotesque adventure of the Green Goblin. Comic fam, use code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics. Unlock this very list days before the release of our video. Stay up on the rapidly moving marketplace catalog your comics get suggested pricing on your own collection as well as key comic books and next at the list at number nine a villain that won't come off our list we have daredevil 131 bullseye the villain who never misses We've been talking about this character for weeks. We know ever since Hitmonkey was denied the use, forcing them to use Lady Bullseye, that Marvel probably has plans for the villain. We have more record-breaking sales, starting with the CGC 4.5, which sold for just $130 back in October. It's up now 77%, selling for $230. We saw a 6.5 come to market, last selling in January for 385. Then Charlie Cox reprises his role as the Daredevil, pushing this book up even more since then. Now up 4% this week, selling for an easy 400. And we saw another second highest sale with this CGC 9.6. It sold for $2,160, which is just 6% shy of the all-time high of 2300 Next at the list at number 8, we have a major Batman villain, DC Key, Batman. 232 created by Danny O'Neill and Neil Adams the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul and the second appearance of his daughter Talia an awesome Batman key considering most of the Batman rogues have those double first appearances when it comes to golden age or silver age you got the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul second appearance of his daughter and you have the trial that Batman's put through to see if he can take over the League of Assassins and gain Talia's love with a nice kiss at the end there we have record-breaking sales including a second highest sale we're gonna start with the CGC 4.5 which sold for $435 back in November it's up 3% now selling for 450 50. Then we have the 7.0, like I said, has its second highest sale, now selling for 750 And then we have a monster grade. I can't believe this even exists. A 9.8 came to market. And this is a book that we've seen in the last year hit the market, which is also surprising. Selling back in June of last year for $18,000, up 14%, now selling for 20500 Hot damn comic fam next at the list at number seven a modern key a book that i think is blue chip in the making going to catch up to miles morales one day we have edge of spider-verse issue number two it's so cool to see this book grow because if you're like me, you were there when this book hit the stands and became this huge key issue. Gwen Stacy and the alternate universe who becomes Spider-Gwen. We have multiple printings and variants and regular grades to report on here. Let's start with the second printing, the CGC 9.8, which sold for $685 back in January, up 31%, now selling for $899. I feel like that can break that $1,000 marker, especially when you look at how the direct market copy goes for, as well as the 1 in 25 variant. Speaking of which, that 1 in 25, we saw a 7.5 hit the market. There's no other prior data to report on, but that 7.5 hit $1,975. 
And then we have the regular A cover, a CGC 9.0 to report on. It sold for $482 back in January, and it's up 6% now, selling for $510. Looking at the list, at number six, we have Incredible Hulk issue number two, the second appearance of Bruce Banner, but the first time we see him with that green bod. Green skin baby, CGC 1.8 breaking record. It sold for $1,991 back in November. It's up 10%, now selling for $2,200. Then we got the 2.5 which sold for $2,250 back in October, up 15%, now selling for $2,596. We have the prior record set just this past January for a 5.0, selling for $5,000, and that's up 12%, now selling for $5,600. What is it that's pushing this comic book up? I mean, clearly Hulk is beloved, but I think this right here demonstrates less spec potential and more long-term securing of blue chip keys that are always going to be wanted in the collectible space. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's market correction because what's a Hulk 1 go for? And this is the first green skin. It's an important comic moment. Like you said, more for like the history of comics and less for speculation. I think it's a good buy and the prices are starting to uh, reflect that. Looking at number five, we have Marvel Spotlight 28. Can you believe it, Jem? At the end of this month, we're going to finally see Moon Knight hit the screen. Yeah, from what we've seen so far with the trailers, I'm excited. It looks like they're nailing this suit. We are getting multiple iterations. I've been reading up on my Moon Knight as well, so I'm ready for it. And Marvel Spotlight 28, it's an important book. It's the first solo Moon Knight story, the first appearance of his longtime love interest, Marlene. And we got a couple of unique sales to report on. That's right. We have a 5.5 30 cent price variant that actually came to market and there's no prior sales data to report on. It sold for $373. To give you some perspective, you can purchase a 5.5 for $175 less. That's how much more that 30 cent premium is commanding. But that's not all. We had a 6.0 30 cent price variant sell as well. It sold for $165 back in 2017. This sale puts it up 203%, selling for $500. And you can buy a CGC 9.0 for that same price on the regular cover. But that's not all, Jam. We saw a tremendous sale take place this past week, and it's for a extremely difficult-to-find kind of comic book. It's considered an error, and it's one of my favorites. It's a double cover. A 9-8 double cover back in 2020 sold for $2,160, and that's up 156% this week, now selling for $5,520, and... Just a day ago, not being listed on the Hot 10 because we actually record the video just a couple days within the posting of the initial list, we saw a 9.8 direct market copy sell of this comic for $4,100. That one extra cover is valued at over $1,000 officially. Moving on to number four on the list, we have Batman issue 133. It's the third appearance of Batmite, but it's the first appearance of Kite Man. The Kite Man is one of those Batman villains that's so ridiculous. I mean, he literally just has a kite that transitions to other types of weaponry to make him, yes, kind of a competitive foe, but more of a laughing stock. And since his debut in this issue, he wouldn't be reutilized for over like 12 years afterwards. And when he was utilized, it was always as a kind of funny thing to include, nothing super serious. And he gained popularity in the Harley Quinn animated show. The comic relief was stellar and Tom King even incorporated him in his run gave him a bit more of a backstory proving that any villain regardless of how ridiculous has a redemption quality that if done right the writing if it's perfect can make him a highlighted character that not only can make him entertaining in the comic but could eventually get him on the screen because that's where he's headed according to hbo max who is scripting an animated series for this villain Charles Brown, a.k.a. Chuck Brown, named after Charlie Brown, who can never quite get his kite to fly. Kite Man in a 2.5 would sell for $250 back in February, up 42% now, selling for $356. A 3.5 going for $200, up 108%, selling for $415. Good grief. And then we have the CGC 4.5, which sold for $173 back in April, up 186%, now selling for 495 
comment, like, and subscribe. We're here for the comic fam every single week. It'll enter you to win this Omni-Man Invincible 1 whatnot exclusive. And at the list at number three, this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Every week we report on the hottest comics in the marketplace with the hope that you can utilize this information. The market moves so rapidly that it may lead you towards certain spec over others. What investments you should make now? What other comic books may spike because of the comics that made the list? Well, there is a key significance that hasn't been routinely collected up until this year, and it's being proven this week again and again at the list at number three. Fantastic for 112, an iconic cover by John Buscema, but a classic battle between two heroes. And that right there is what's pushing this book up on the list. Yeah, we got to see this play out in the MCU, the thing versus the Hulk. And that's what makes this exciting about collecting comics. It's like a new genre of keys. You have your first appearances. Now you have your key moments in comics that became a scene in a movie. We have a CGC 5.5, which sold for $205 back in February, up 22%, now selling for 250 a 6.0 back in February went for $260. It's up 4% selling consistently, now hitting 270. And a 6.5 back in February hit 358. That's also up 5%, now selling for 376. Comic fam, what other hero battles that take place in comic books are you hunting? Help your other fellow comic fam members because there is still room on these iconic comic books and the covers that showcase the battle on them as well next at the list at number two amazing spider-man 101 the first appearance of jerry leto in comics just kidding morbius and we're just days away from the debut it should be coming out april 1st or is this an april fool's joke the trailers look promising i'm actually kind of excited and so are collectors because the cgc 2.5 just broke record it sold for 350 dollars back in december it's up 14 percent now selling for 400 bucks the 6.5 went for a thousand dollars back in september that's up 10 percent selling for 11 hundo and let's top it off with the CGC 9.6, which sold for $9,600 back in June. It's up 7%, crossing that five-figure mark, selling for $10,250. Wow, less than a week until the movie, and it broke $10,000. Hot damn, comic fam. If you like what we do, hit the link in the description. Join the community. We're talking the mystery mail call. Every single month, you're giving me an excuse to send you some funny books in the mail. And every box in April is going to be getting one version, not both, of Something is Killing the Children, issue 21, cover art done by Peach Momoko. Support what we do in Gem. Hit them with the number one hottest book in the multiverse. And you know, I hope that they have this scene in the MCU because we're talking about Submariner 59, which is a classic battle of Namor versus Thor. And being that I invested in Namor's first Silver Age appearance, I want to see him in the MCU really bad. Jim, I just picked me up a Fantastic Four annual number one, Submariner on Throne. Had to get it. Comic fam, this book being on the list is what I'm talking about. A classic battle between two heroes. This is something that we've repeated on the mic multiple times. Records being shattered while everyone's hunting for these blue chip keys, these second appearances, the Mark Jewelers, the newsstands. But don't sleep on the iconic moments in comic books, especially when they grace the cover. And we're going to hit you with four record-breaking sales, starting with the CGC 9.0. It sold for $104 back in January. It's up 68%, now selling for $175. Then we got the 9.4, which sold for $149 back in 2021, up 39%, now selling for 207 the 9.6 went for 375 back in 2008. Haven't seen this one in a while, so that's why it sold for an increase of 100% slang for 750. But the 9.8, hot damn, it sold back in October for 1,620. And this was towards the peak of the comic boom, and Submariner is still not confirmed yet. So when we see a price match, nay, increase by 5%, it matters because it means we're going to see trickle-down effects. A $1,700 sale just landed this very week. We appreciate your time today, comic fam. As always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Comic fam, join myself and Jem Min every single Wednesday on the best new place to buy and sell funny books. What not Wednesday? We take over the mic from 2 to 9 p.m. 
multiple sellers. And Jem, you kick us off at 2 o'clock. That's right, man. And I've been going hard on Whatnot. Whatnot Wednesdays, other days. I've been buying stuff. I've been having a blast on there. Hit the link, follow both of our stores. We'll see you on Wednesday for dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. Also, we made some other videos. Enjoy them. We made them for you. At least watch them for Butch. Have a great week.